Hello again, I'm Eric, and I am an amateur trail runner. I'm working on some ultra marathons right now. These interviews that I'm doing come from the film that I did called 50, which was my first 50 miler, and I'm getting all these comments from people about trail running, especially people in the middle part of their lives who have maybe just taken up running, and that community knowledge is so important and so vital. I thought I'd better talk to Louise Blay. She is a human kinetics professor. One of the things that has been puzzling exercise physiologists for many years is this concept of fatigue. Why do you stop running after a certain number of kilometers or why do you stop pushing a certain speed, whether it be on your bike or running, right? So what is called the central governor of fatigue is the brain. And that even though, yes, your body is always taking stock of you know, how hard is my heart working? How hard am I breathing? What is my, what we call rating of perceived exertion? How hard do I feel like I'm exercising right now? And we're always gauging, can I go a little bit harder? Can I slow down a little bit more? Should I slow down? That sort of thing. We know that the new model of fatigue is called the psychobiological model, which is that your body is keeping score of all of the physical things that are happening to you. And it's using that to come up with a determination of, do you have the motivation to overcome the effort? So your body's always assessing effort. And when your body feels the effort is too great for you to continue or too great, you don't have the motivation to push any further, you choose to stop. And I think that's really key because it is a decision. And there's been enough research to show that people can be working at pretty much their max effort. You know, even if we look at some of the efforts that have been uh, coming out with the Nike breaking two, right? So trying to break that two hour marathon, certainly these marathoners are running at a pretty maximal effort for two hours, but can still find more to put in a kick at the very end, right? We know that there isn't something physiologically holding us back, it's actually psychological. And so what I find super exciting about this is that we can affect effort. For me as a coach, that's what I target. I target effort. How can I make this effort seem easier for you? Sometimes that's through having you properly hydrate, making sure that you're consuming enough carbohydrate, because carbohydrate is the energy source of your exercise. Carbohydrate also does something magical to your brain. In fact, your brain wants carbohydrate when you're exercising so much. And I know you're thinking, wait, my muscles want it. Your brain needs it, right? Your brain is fueled by carbohydrate just as much as your muscles are. You have receptors in your mouth that as soon as you put a carb anything carbohydrate in your mouth, your brain gets the message that carbohydrate is on its way. And as soon as it gets that message, it only takes seconds, your rating of perceived effort diminishes a little bit. Caffeine does this too. So if you have caffeine during your event, so caffeinated gels or Coke, uh, caffeine reduces you, your sense of perceived effort at any given intensity during your event. But then there's mental skills things we can do, right? So those are physical things we can do to reduce our body's perceived sense of effort. But one of the most effective tools that has ever been shown to do this, and, and they've done quite a bit of research on this, is self-talk. And not just any self-talk. Self-talk is changing the words we say to ourselves. So first of all, it requires mindfulness. You actually have to pay attention to the things you're saying when you're um, exercising at a high intensity, and then you need to change them. And the wording is actually essential. So they have actually done research where they've had somebody say something to themselves like, I am strong versus you are strong. And you are strong is more effective than I am strong. So you want to speak to yourself, uh, not in the first person. The other thing I think is really key is changing your perception of effort. So when we are exercising, so intensity is what I like to call the great equalizer. When people are exercising, I could put in a group, I could have a brand new beginner exerciser, somebody who's super deconditioned, and I could have an Olympic athlete. And if I put them on spin bikes, for example, and say, I want you to work at a, say, a 10 out of 10, 
the beginner is going to be doing what a pretty common thing with intensity. They're going to be saying things to themselves like, I suck. I'm not ready for this. I didn't train for this. What am I doing here? I don't belong here. The Olympic athlete is going to say, this is hard. This is making me stronger. This is what I need. This is perfect. And that is key. And that is a choice. Right. But beginners don't have the experience of having done this enough times to, first of all, know they're not going to die from this effort and that it is absolutely essential. Effort is essential to increase your performance. Right. You're never going to get better at anything unless you actually work harder than you've worked before. That's the whole concept of stress. And so the only way to do that is to apply more effort. The effort's going to be uncomfortable. Get over it. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it's your friend. Because without that effort, you are not going to improve. So change the way you think about effort. It is a choice that we have. And our self-talk is our story, right? That's how we, we create these stories and we can change them just by changing our self-talk. So using self-talk in the moment, like using you've got this, you're strong, you can do this, you're, you know, you're running well, these are things you actually practice training. You don't save them for race day. You absolutely have to get better at them while you're training and debrief and record. And that's been shown to be really effective. So you said um, something that I wanted to pick up on really quickly here is about being a better athlete. We're athletes in the sense that we are trying to condition our bodies for the long run, for reality, for the world, for life, to be healthy people. Remaining independent is probably going to be the biggest training event of our lives, right? And we don't appreciate it when we're young and we're functional and everything's working. But I mean, I think if anything, this pandemic has taught us is that we don't want to live in an aged care home if we don't need to, right? Many people are in these homes because they don't have the functional strength to get their bodies around, to get dressed and to get their groceries and, and do those activities of daily living. And that is completely preventable. We can continue to, you know, train for that. I'm, you know, here I am at my age teaching my 18 year old students, uh, you know, the, the importance of resistance training. And I'm incredibly passionate about resistance training. And so are they. They're doing it because they want to look good naked. And I'm doing it because I actually don't want anyone to see me naked. I want to get my own body out of the back. <laughs> Another really important concept of using those words, I am an athlete, if we're trying to change somebody's behavior, so let's say we're trying to get them to participate in more physical activity, the closer that behavior is to their identity, the better or the more success we'll have at changing their behavior. So for example, an athlete would never stop exercising. An athlete fuels their body properly because they're an athlete. There's nothing special. I believe even Gary Robbins talks about this in your film, right? There is nothing special about people who run 50 miles. We just apply the science and the people who do it repeatedly become a little bit more special because they start to really draw on those mental skills. But, you know, exercise isn't something that is just saved for the lucky or the privileged. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. And thank you very much for watching us. Really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed these videos, please like the video, subscribe to the channel as well, and share it with a friend. Maybe it'll help them in their training. Thank you.